Hi, I'm Stephen Jones. At Robert Wood Johnson, we believe citizens need to be informed about the important health care issues affecting their lives. That's why we're proud to support the health care programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. Women and Heart Health, next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Berkeley College, TD Bank, PSENG, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. MagnaCare, Activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chest Challenge. New Jersey Sharing Network, dedicated to saving lives through organ and tissue donation. And by Kessler Foundation, changing the lives of people with disabilities. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger, powering NJ.com, and by Commerce Magazine. Welcome to Caucus, New Jersey. I'm Steve Adubato. You know, the number one cause of death in women is heart disease. But there are some simple changes that you can make to lower your risk and live a long and healthy life. Here to discuss heart health, we have Bobby Chaco, who is, in fact, a volunteer for Mended Hearts. We also have Dr. Shuba Gowda, who is a cardiologist and electrophysiologist at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital. Marjorie Nolan Cohn is a registered dietitian. Finally, Holly Boylan is a 23-year-old patient who suffered from an arrhythmia. I want to thank all of you for joining us to talk about women and heart health. Uh, by the way, an arrhythmia is, doctor? It's an abnormal beating of the heart. A normal rhythm beats regularly. The heart goes rhythmically and re regularly. In an arrhythmia, it's an abnormal rhythm, which means the heart beating either irregularly mm. or out of rhythm. OK, so here's the thing. Now, you're wondering if we could move in here. This is not the typical centerpiece for a PBS television program, but it is an appropriate centerpiece for this program. This is a heart, a, a model of a heart an that you brought in. Mo model. Um, now, could you see, and our camera guys are the best, so we'll get this, an arrhythmia. Is it something that you can pick up by looking at this diagram? No. You can't? No. It's an electrical activity that's recorded. Or if you were actually watching a live heart, you could. You could watch a heart beating out of sync or not beating regularly. Uh, but this is really an anatomical model of the heart to show the different parts. Um, I always tell my patients, and I've used an analogy, that your heart is exactly like your house. Oh, it's got your heart is exactly like your house. By the way, as you hear gems like this, realize that we have information at the bottom of the screen. Uh, websites where you can get additional information. Heart is exactly like? Your house. Go ahead. Um, the reason I use the analogy and some of my colleagues have taken it out is, like your house, you got upper floor, bottom floors. The heart has two top chambers, which two is like chambers. the two rooms on the upstairs. You got this? Kip, you got this, guys? Two bottom floor uh, rooms, and it's got plumbing, it's got electricity. When but a heart has plumbing? Absolutely. Go That's ahead. the beauty. Um, it's, it's very much like your house. It's got four rooms again, two on the top, two rooms on the bottom. It's got plumbing, which are all these pipes, the red and Can the you blue tilt it pipes. a little bit this way, guys? A little bit. Bob, tell me what you need. Is this good? Good, guys? Tell me when. Doctor, pick it up. Um, it has got... A heart lesson, 101. It's got pipes which are blue and red, which is which carry the blood, good blood and the bad blood, or the darkened blood is the bad blood, which collects all the impurities from the rest of the body, brings it back to the lungs, gets cleaned and purified, and the lungs bring it back into the heart through the red pipes. This is plumbing. When the plumbing is affected and the pipes that supply, the blood supply to the heart muscle itself have blockages by either fat or cholesterol right. um, or platelets. Plaque. Plaque. Got it. Um, uh, basically, it's sort of the junk that we eat sometimes. Um, they get deposited, or we have familial and genetic predisposition for these pipes to become sticky. And you got to do something to open up the pipes. Exactly. That's plumbing. And arrhythmia is not An in there? An arrhythmia is not plumbing. Arrhythmia is electricity. Oh, wow. So this house has electricity like plumbing. It's got doors. Before I come to the electricity, the doors are these valves that close and open, close and open, and let the blood from one room go into the next room. 
Okay, wow. So you, it's got four doors or four valves, four rooms. The plumbing, now coming to the most important part, the electricity that makes the heart beat. Okay. Let me do this, doctor, because I feel like this heart lesson could go on for the next hour here on public mm -hmm. television, but more information can be found sure. on the website. On okay. several websites. But let me ask you, you were born with this. Yes. Now, what's so fascinating to me is that you were born with it, you were dealing with it. How did it affect your life? Um, it, for the most part, I was still living a normal life. I would might get tired faster if I was doing exercising or might get lightheaded or dizzy if I'm doing it for too long. But for the most part, I was still able to do everything I wanted to do in a normal life. Okay, okay but here's the thing. You knew that you had to do something about it. Yes, I didn't find out until I had this until January of this year. Okay, till January of 2014. Now we're in the spring of 2014. In March, what it's date? March 20th. March 20th, you had a procedure done called? Ablation. An the ablation. Electrophysiological study and an ablation. An ablation. And you have a couple of pictures of this. And very quickly, doctor, before I move to the other side of the panel, what is an ablation and why was it so significant? Holly had a heart condition that she actually was born with. She had a small hole in the heart. It was repaired when, as a child. Um, and related and unrelated to that, she developed an arrhythmia or an abnormal beating of the heart, which goes as an aberrant, abnormal form of electrical conduction within the heart. She started having symptoms. Initially, they were probably minor, but later on, the frequency and the duration of these symptoms started increasing. Am I correct, Holly? Yes. And that's when she sought help. And the ablation, real quickly, is? is burning of a tissue inside the heart that's abnormal and causing the abnormal beating of the it's heart. It's a burning of it. And it does what for you, Holly? It stops my heart beating so quickly. Change? You, you feel it? You sense yes. it? Yes. You I do? Could, I could feel it. I, my chest actually moves. My whole body moves with it when my heart is beating really fast. You feel differently? Yes. I don't have that anymore. But it's interesting. This, this whole issue of the arrhythmia is just one heart-related issue. But the other reason we wanted to do this program um, is because there is a misconception out there that this is, heart disease is a disease for men. That this is not something that affects women as much as it does. And as we said in the intro, it's the number one killer of women. Mom. Talk talk about your involvement in this and from a nutritional perspective. How much does nutrition play a role in the prevention effort for women? Well, nutrition is actually um, considered the number one uh, determiner of health overall, Number including one, heart health. Not exercise. Not exercise. Exercise is, is second, okay. but really nutrition is number one. How we nourish our body is going to inherently affect every system that we have, including and obviously the heart. So just like plumbing, what you put into, you know, again, heart, house, plumbing, just keeping with this analogy, you put stuff in there that clogs up, you know, the pipes. What, the pipes, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a problem. It, it's not that simple, I know. So what should people, what should women be eating more of and then less of? Uh, what women need to, anyone, but what women need to be eating more of is actually the right kinds of fats. There's a notion, just like heart disease is a male problem, that we need to cut out all fats. And the reality is you need to eat more of the right types of fat, the unsaturated mono and polyunsaturated fats. Which comes fats. from what foods? That comes from plant sources, like pure olive oil, canola oil, uh, avocados, nuts and seeds. There's actually, um, thinking in terms of the monounsaturated fatty acids and omega-3 fatty acids, mm. we want to think of a high-fat fish as well as grass-fed beef, which can be very expensive, but it's also an investment. And less of? Less butter, saturated animal fats, and less trans fatty acids, which are man-made uh, fats that we know for sure have been proven in clinical trials to um, really affect heart health. And let me ask you this, sorry for interrupting, Bobby. Uh, your organization, what's it called? Mended Heart. Why is it called that? Because. We talk to all kinds of people. Most of us visit patients. Uh, Who's us? How did you even get into this? And then tell us Well, I, I had a couple of stents in the hospital, and I had people came and visited me. And the first time they came, I really, I kind of. The said, mended health people came. Yeah, or mended hearts people visitors, came. Visitors, right. And I, I kind of 
push it aside. Anyway, the second time they came, my husband said, you know, maybe we should look into this organization. Maybe we should get a little educated. And we did. We went. And uh, a few months later, I had open heart surgery. I had bypass. So uh, I, I didn't. This I'm, in the late 90s, I think? I, 98, 98, I had the okay. bypass. 97, late 97, I had one stent. 98. So how does Mended maybe. Hearts help you at the time? Well, because they gave me encouragement, support. Uh, they taught me what I should be doing and not doing. Uh, and the biggest thing is your attitude. What do you mean your attitude? You have what does to have attitude a good have to do with heart health? Oh, well, it has a lot. It has to do with any kind of health. But attitude, uh, thinking positive, you, you can't go back over something. Once it's happened, it happened. You have to go forward. Look for tomorrow. Take one day at a time. Have a good attitude. Do, do the right things. Eat the right things. Do how all the things. By the way, as we put up the website for Mended Hearts, yes. how has this experience changed your life and your attitude about life? Well, I'll be honest with you. I thought they were talking about somebody else when I was first told I was going to have this. I, I, had, I started with angina, and I had no idea what angina was. I thought I was having, uh, you know, like heartburn. A heart, heartburn or something, like right? Or something but it like got that. so bad that I would have to sit down. I couldn't do anything, and then I would lose circulation wow. in my arms. So I went to the doctor, and uh, while I was there, I was having one, and he said, you're going to the hospital. I, I couldn't believe it. But, you know, it, it makes you a better person because you're more understanding. Once, you've got, once you get a little knowledge and you have something done, whatever, you, whatever in my case, it was surgery, right. uh, yeah, you're better. Do you eat differently? Excuse me? Do you eat differently today? Yeah, I, I cheat once in a while. I'm, I'm honest <laughs> with you. I'm honest Normal. with you. But, okay. you know, I even tell people when I visit, yeah, watch what you eat. But once in a while, have that little thing what you want. Just don't do it every day. Yes, but moderation. Moderation. Exercise a part of your world? Well, it should be bigger. I, I walk. I did do well, you, a lot of you exercise. You do more than, oh, you did? I did. I went, I, I, before I had my heart problem, I used to go to aerobic class every day. Oh, well, well, well about well, three days a week well, anyway. Well, hold on, wait a minute now. What's so interesting to me then is, you're making it clear that even if a woman exercises on a regular Absolutely. basis, even if a woman eats the right things, it helps, but there are certain risk factors, some of them genetic. Doctor? Yes. Bobby's talking about doing a lot of the right things. But a lot, a lot See, of I, you can't I didn't guarantee want, anything. Yeah. No. Jump in. I, I, I didn't want to interrupt, but Bobby gave a very classic, actually, typical story with no prompting. She said, I didn't think it was her heart. The statistics show that women present very atypically compared to men they with present heart disease. atypically completely atypical men versus in women go ahead me, so men versus women very interestingly and very realistic um, important statistics are men present typical elephant sitting on the chest heavy in my chest tightness sweating diaphoretic left arm pain women can come in with sinusitis, have come in with heartburn. Sinusitis? I've had pa uh, women patients come into the ER for completely unrelated symptoms, and I've actually been diagnosed with an acute heart attack. A lot of the women, a uh, lot of the heart disease in women also get diagnosed in an outpatient setting where it's an abnormal stress test, EKG that's abnormal, or an echocardiogram, uh, the tests that are abnormal, but presenting, presenting to the ER completely atypically. That's women. So therefore, as we put up information on the <coughs> website, it is important that women know what those warning signs are right. and that they are not the same exactly, exactly the same as men. And the and most, you need to be aware of those quickly. And the most common thing is women most often present with just not feeling good or short of breath. They can't carry that same laundry basket that they were carrying mm -hmm. easily before. They can't run around the kids or do something they were doing. And, and one of the very interesting statistics about women, all of us do it, we take more care of the family more than us. So we put everything above and beyond. In his, there's a study in Hispanic women especially that a Hispanic woman is more prone or more tends to more take care of the whole family than go to the doctor herself so do you for think several women, decades. Sorry for interrupting. Do you think women are potentially more susceptible to some of these issues because they are less aware concerned right. and focused on their own health. Absolutely. They have well, so therefore, by the time they're, they're dealing with it, Absolutely. it not, not that it's too late, but they could do something earlier on? 
Yes, absolutely. Um, there are a lot of really simple lifestyle changes that any woman could start to do right away, but may not realize now, go ahead. it. Mm -hmm. They're watching right now on public broadcasting. What could women watching right now who want to give themselves the best chance to have a long and healthy life? Well, one of the, the first things you can start to do easily that is no cost whatsoever is exercise. The current recommendations to improve heart health are about five days a week, 30 minutes per day. That can actually be broken up into 10 or 15 minute segments. Someone so says, quote, I don't have the time, you say? 10 minutes, increase your heart rate. And this is not an intense exercise. It's a moderately high heart rate. You should be able to not hold a conversation with the person next to you if you're walking. Okay. Have to take a couple of breaths every few words, but it's not highly intense. So you don't have to do one of those infomercials where you know people yeah, are totally transforming their bodies in right. six weeks. No, it, that's that, not what we're talking no, about. No, no, this actually doesn't uh, isn't necessarily associated with weight. Even it's a matter of uh, your heart's a muscle, so strengthening and conditioning the heart. Holly, listen, how old are you right now? Twenty-three. Hmm. <laughs> to very <laughs> young women, I know you said you just referenced she's a baby, but she's a baby who's experienced an awful lot. What would you say to the women out there who are in their twenties? early 30s who say, not me, could never happen to me, to, you say? I would definitely tell them to be aware of what's going on with themselves, if they feel anything wrong, to definitely get it checked out, to not wait and have something else possibly happen if they're waiting too long, and to stay physically fit and eat well, and try to exercise just to keep what do you, everything. How has it changed you? Um, it makes me more aware of what could go wrong, and it just pushes me to want to do more with myself and I personally want to get into the heart field on my own to start really? working with others, yes. What do you mean? I want to be a cardiac sonographer. I want to help do ultrasounds with all of the heart on other people and share my story with them. Goes back to what you said about attitude. Attitude, absolutely. You could decide, that's it, I got a tough break in life, born with a hole in my heart, life's unfair, whatever. You choose to see it differently. Yes because I had so many good experiences with doctors as I was growing up since I did have open heart surgery at two months old and then I had this surgery just a month ago. It's just, I've had so many doctors with good experiences that I want to be one of them. And what I, want, what I would like to bring up is that Bobby's story is more of um, the women developing heart disease as cardiovascular disease, um, whereas Holly is more genetic and familiar. Yes. She's born mm -hmm. with it or sometimes they are Kids are born with it, but it doesn't act up until middle age. It's an arrhythmia, which is electrical issue, uh, which sometimes can be related to the plumbing, but in Holly's case, it was not plumbing. It was something, an abnormal electrical tissue she was born with, yeah. which decided to act up yeah. a few months ago for her. A, co a couple interesting uh, things that we Real quick, to bring, I have some bring some about for women in heart disease is that every year, more women than men die of heart disease, but we are more aware of men. The statistics are that one of every three women die of heart disease. One of every three One of every third women die of heart disease. The other interesting statistic is that in the United States, about 43 million women are affected with, uh, 43 million women are affected with heart disease. But since 1984, every year, more women than men have died of heart disease. Combining all the causes of death in women, the number one cause of death, not just disease, number one cause of death is heart disease. And if you count breast cancer, which we have a great campaign against, one in every 31 women die of breast cancer, but one in every three women die of heart disease. And in terms of attention, media attention, public attention, and we have great respect for our colleagues in the, who cover and focus on breast, breast health, and we have as well. But there's a dramatic difference in terms of the amount of attention and focus on breast health I, I, versus heart health. I also think, though, the, the number one thing for women Not that is it's they, either or, they, by they, the way. They should get a physical every year. Talk about that. I'm sorry to interrupt you. A physical every year they should get. Because Absolutely. then you can catch things before they become uh, monsters. Uh, you know? what, what do you mean? Well, a lot of women, they, they never go to the doctor. Very well said. You know, so, but what are they looking well for? Said. I mean, uh, well, a woman anything, says, I don't want to go. I want to find out something i got to deal with. You know, I'd rather not know. Well, you say. see, that, that's, that's the problem. A lot of people feel that way. They don't want to know. Well, What's it's the problem too late. not and wanting then, to know? And then they cry when it's too late, you and know? Sometimes when women have presented, like Holly, with raising hearts, they've been misdiagnosed. 
as panic attacks or anxiety mm -hmm. attacks. Right. Yes. Another thing I, I just want to point out is that I think this is true for, for adults, men and women, is that when there's some sort of problem in their prescribed medication, it sort of, uh, you know, Does it, mask it? It, it masks it. And people think, oh, right. okay, I'm on my, my cholesterol's fine right. now because I'm on medication. Right. And that's not true. But don't we want to, hold on, the dilemma here is, don't we want to take advan advantage of modern medicine, take those medicines to monitor our cholesterol? Yes, but you have to you go know, to a doctor to have them monitored. That's, you can't that's monitor right. them yourself. You can't monitor them yourself. And one of the things I one of the things I encounter so often with clients that come to me is um, that they don't realize they have heart disease. They don't mm -hmm. realize their cholesterol is high. They don't realize that they're pre-diabetic or even diabetic, which is close related to heart disease, because they are on medications and their blood work is normal because of the medication. So the risk factors include diabetes. Diabetes. Mm -hmm. Big, uh, high big. cholesterol, hypertension, or high blood pressure as well. O overweight? Overweight and mm -hmm. obesity. Smoking? Smoking. Stress. Stress. Mm -hmm. Life after a heart attack. You've told our producers. Well, I didn't, ha I didn't have a heart attack. I'm sorry. Life after a heart event, if right. you will, procedure, whatever it is. Right. You've said that a stent and surgery is not a cure. No. And you know, today, more people get stents than they have open heart surgery. And they think they're automatically cured. What are they? What are, they're not cured, but what are oh, they? No, no they, it's a Band-Aid. It's a Band-Aid, because 9 out of 10, well, I shouldn't say that. Today, they're a little better, the stents. They're coated, so they do last a little better. In my case, I had two stents. They were metal. I had a 1 inch and a 5 inch, and they just clogged again. So I ended up having to have surgery. But when, listen, I want to be clear though, yes. the, the stents are better than ever before. Absolutely. They may not be a cure, but they are what, doctor? They're called drug eluted stents or coated stents. Right, they're coated. They're pieces of metal that you put in these pipes to open them when they have the blockage. Mm -hmm. A pipe can have a blockage. Basically, a pipe is straight or it can have a constriction. So we put a piece of metal and open up the blockage, but they can close up again. Mm -hmm. And like Bobby said, B Bobby has great... Um, anecdotes and experience um, because she's lived through them and like she said when they open up actually the symptoms can be worse than what she had initially. Which is why you have to be as vigilant as ever mm -hmm. about the diet, about exercise, about managing follow stress. Up. Physician um, follow before we get out of here I just I need to ask this question. For women who are challenged from a socioeconomic point of view, women frankly who have a hard time because they live in communities where it's hard to get fresh fruit and vegetables and mm -hmm. healthier food, the kind you described before. For women who are more stressed because the economic realities in their life and the other situations in their life, frankly, are more stressful than others mm -hmm. because economics and the social right. conditions in which they live are more stressful. What do we say to them? Because everything we're talking about, not everything, much of what we, do, we are talking about does involve having access to information, great health care, um, good food, all these kinds of things. It is somewhat related to socioeconomic factors, no? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, right. But you don't have to go to a whole food market to be right. quite healthy. You, can go you pick the right. Making yeah. healthy choices of the choices you have is the key. Attitude is the next key to make sure you make your, keep your physician appointment. So, there's, so in your mind, there's no excuse for anyone, regardless, regardless of their economic position in life, where they live, what community they live in, what their economic status is, to help themselves, a woman helping herself right. protect herself. Well, I, I think you're, 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 you control your, your body. Mm. You control your mind. So it's up to you what you want to do with it. Uh, there is help out there for people. Uh, even in low-income places, uh, we have all these farmer markets and things that they can get food cheaper. But you have to be but proactive have about to, this. Yeah, and they have to cook. You know, today, if you look at the majority of women shopping, they work. Not a lot of them, they work. I understand that. If you're lucky enough to so have they a job, go shopping they and they buy all this pre-made, and that's all they eat. That's why the kids, all they want is chicken McNuggets, macaroni and cheese, because the people... Don't take Which is time. not good for our plumbing by itself. Go no. ahead. And, uh, One minute left. There, you can eat better without a higher cost. It's about yeah. a few substitutions. Olive oil for butter. Um, 
lentils and beans, which you can get dried or canned, and that's actually less expensive mm -hmm. than most meats. You want seasonal produce and frozen Because you get the protein vegetables. out of those beans, right? You get the protein okay, sorry, out of them and high in fiber, which we, it helps lower cholesterol. Um, and then uh, whole grains, brown rice versus white rice. Um, whole grain pasta versus white pasta. Choices. Then Th these things, are. there's no difference in cost. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, you are a terrific group of women who are advocates, who are experts, who are people who have experienced it on your own. Um, and I have a very strong sense that you have helped an awful lot of people in this last half hour on public broadcasting. I want to thank all of you. And at 23, we particularly wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. All the best. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Berkeley College, TD Bank, PSE&G, MagnaCare, Activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chest Challenge, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by Kessler Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. Hi, I'm Peter Rooney. In 2006, I lost my father to renal disease. He was on the waiting list for a new kidney, but did not receive one in time. Unfortunately, so many like my father have lost their lives while waiting for a life-saving organ. At New Jersey Sharing Network, we're committed to saving and enhancing people's lives through organ and tissue donation and by informing people about this important decision. Because you can make a difference and save a life.